This is quite interesting. It's an LED strip I got amongst some other stuff that I ordered from an eBay seller. And it's notable that they appear to have sent me the wrong item. Uh, the item I ordered was 20 LEDs, 13.1 watt integrated LED lens, light, strip, string, module, loads of keywords here. The seller was x-web-top and they've been... Uh, They've been quite interesting because they had loads of really interesting devices. This is one I featured in the previous video. And, of course, the one that I am uh, awaiting final uh, decisions as to if this gets smashed open. Uh, this is this star-shaped uh, LED lamp. But uh, this one... Uh, is different to what I was expecting because it is the completely wrong product. And it's a very seems a very common thing. It's a section of LEDs with an electronic driver at the end, and it's notable that it's got the cable going in, and then it's got a couple of uh, push-down terminals, and you can theoretically then just stack more into the end of that and run a load of these. So this would, looks as though it would be ideal for lighting a panel from behind. But uh, this one, uh, as opposed to the one I ordered, which was just one colour, actually has alternate stripes of warm white, cold white, warm white, cold white. And I thought initially, since I didn't realise it had this little trick up its sleeve, I thought that was just to mix the colours and give a wider colour temperature. But when you actually turn it on, let's bring the power meter in here. When you turn it on, just the cold light, cold white LED, cold white LEDs light, and it draws about 10.4 watts. You turn it off and on again, and now just the warm white LED lights, LEDs light, and it's 10.6 watts. Turn it off and on again, and they both light, but at reduced intensity, so it's roughly 10 watts again, in this case 9.8 watts, so slightly less power, but um, it's reduced them so the overall intensity, the power dissipation is about the same, but it's giving that mixture of the white, so you have the choice of then cold white, warm white, or sort of intermediate white. It's quite neat. So uh, let's uh, take a closer look at this. Now this is a similar technique I found in a recent chip I looked at. It was actually an insect killer light. It was the insect killer light that had the, when you turned it on and off, it selected uh, either the uh, insect killing blue light or the cold white light as well, uh, or the lower intensity cold white light. And that was the same thing. It was actually the same style of chip, but with a, a different uh, drive circuit. I think it was a, basically a resistive limiter it was using. So let's get this out of the way, this power supply, this hoppy meter, should I say. And I'm going to see if I can get this open. It looks a bit awkward. It's got these screws. Uh, but they're actually holding the magnetic supports on because this is designed to just stick onto a metal surface, which also makes it seemingly ideal for, like, say, for instance, a, a sign panel where you could just stick these inside and then just stack them, wire them into each other end to end as a row of the, the light bars. But the magnets are not... I don't think they're going to stop that coming off. They may actually stop that coming off. Now, looking at it, the whole... The hole is smaller, so I'm going to have to take those magnets off. Okay, let's take the magnets off. Screwdriver. So off come the magnets first. The magnets have a little metal insert there. They are, uh, they look like M3 tapped inserts with M3 screws. The M3 screws being an obvious choice for an M3 tapped insert. And rather conveniently stick together so you're not going to lose them so easily. Well, I mean, I say that, you're going to lose the whole lot at once, probably. So that's that bit out. What happens now? The circuit board looks like it's held in by these sort of spring-loaded plastic clips. Let's squeeze them together with a pair of long nose pliers and see what happens. I also see a little... Uh, indent here that's going to stop it coming out. Let's get the spudger into that. This is quite a long, unwieldy thing to fit under the camera. The bench has its limitations in the size of things you can fit under it. Um, there are some things I'd really like to feature in videos, but they're actually so big that I'm going to have to start the video with them um, uh, just being shown well, where I can actually fit them in and then show what's inside once I get to the bench. So that's that one off. This is really caught under this. There it goes.
There it goes. Uh, is this one going to come off easily? It's quite unwieldy. I think it goes on a lot easier than it comes off. Temperature wise, I ran this at full power. Well, full power, I say full power, now I know it's not actually full power. I ran it with all the LEDs lit and all I can say is that the temperature was body temperature. It wasn't really showing any great signs of heat at all, which is also very good. This is actually going quite well. It's coming out easier than I expected. It's come out. So what do we have? We have two chips here. That's interesting. What on earth is that then? So we've got the mains coming in, we've got a bridge rectifier, we've got the choke here, the inductor, a smoothing capacitor presumably, another capacitor. Oh, this is odd. What are these chips then? What are these integrated circuits? I think it's time to get the, the reading glasses on so I can actually see these things. The Perils of old age. You get to when I got to the age of forty-five, the eyesight started going, and it was really annoying at the time. You get so used to reading tiny little component values, and then suddenly you couldn't read them anymore. Okay, H A five eight three two E. What's the other one? Well, that's not actually readable because it looks quite grubby. Oh, S four two seven five. I think I'm going to have to actually. Uh, I think I'm going to have to actually go and look these chips up. So I shall be back in a moment. So it turns out that one of these chips is a buck regulator, very similar to the one that was used in this light that I featured recently. And this is a schematic for that one. And it really is that it's pretty much. Uh, it's got a different number in the chip. The chip number is. Let's see where is it. It's. HA5832E, and I found pictures of that, but no actual data sheet. The other chip, uh, apart from the buck regulator, is the switching chip that switches the two sections of LEDs. I didn't even find a data sheet for that. Uh, the number on it is S4225, and then underneath it says 8ED97, lowercase k2. I drew a blank on that completely, but its function is very clearly to switch the two sections of LEDs. Notable things, the LEDs are actually wired as parallel pairs. So each of these pairs of LEDs are wired in parallel. There are 10 of each. It basically gives about 30 volts across each LED circuit. This little chip down here, let's zoom in a little bit. This little chip down here that's doing the switching has a resistor feeding it uh, as a signal, I'm guessing, from the positive rail from the power supply in here, so it can detect when the power's turned off and on again. It's also got a little reservoir capacitor here, which I'm guessing is used to just hold the memory to so it knows that the power's been switched off and on again. And then it will just literally be just toggling through the outputs. So it'll be one, uh, two, or both together. And uh, the Four pins on this side of the chip are common as two pairs, each one driving a string of the LEDs. The buck regulator is very typical of this design. It's got an inductor with just two pins. The mains comes in and goes through the bridge rectifier and gets smoothed with this capacitor to provide a smooth DC. Uh, the two resistors here, which are identical to the... Uh, what was the value again? It was a... Uh, 330k, can I, uh, hold on, I'll turn the light on this, you can see 330k, 334, uh, 33 and 4 zeros. They've got two of those in series providing power over to the chip, which then, uh, hold on, where are they, where are they, uh, I've lost it completely, oh there, it goes over to the little smoothing capacitor here, uh, and then a 100k discharge resistor across that, which also probably acts as sort of a, uh, a voltage divider with the supply uh, resistors. There's another resistor here, which I'm guessing it's uh, 3902, so 39k, uh, which is probably the over voltage protect on that chip. And then there's two resistors here in parallel for fine tuning the, uh, there they are, 1.5 ohm and one. 0.3 ohm where the R is being used as the decimal point and they're in parallel to fine tune the actual current through the LEDs 
which in this case is probably going to be higher. That's why they get the lower value of the two in parallel, because it's a higher current at lower voltage through these LEDs to get this sort of equivalent power. There's the diode in the circuit, uh, and then the rest of the components are all support components around here for this chip. Uh, and a smoothing capacitor for the LEDs, and then another, another little resistor there. What the value is that? Uh, 514. Uh, am I even going to be able to show you that one? It's down there. I don't think I'm going to be able to focus it. But uh, 514, which is 51 and 4 zeros, which is 510k. That's just presumably to discharge the resistor to make them go out, uh, the capacitor to make them go out sort of fairly quickly when the power's turned off. It's odd, it's not kind of, I, I thought this was going to be integrated into a single chip, but it's not. It's quite interesting, it's got the boost reg, uh, bulk regulator and then the switching chip here for actually doing the colour temperature variation. It's quite neat. Uh, but yeah, that's quite a smart uh, arrangement, as I say, it runs fairly cool. Um, what power? What current is flowing through these LEDs? Um, well, given that it's uh, 10 pairs of LEDs and it's uh, 10 watts of power, then each of these LEDs is theoretically uh, running at half a watt, which, considering they're sort of 2835-ish type LEDs, that's quite a lot. But that said, the, uh, the tracks that connect them are really large areas, so it's going to really be dissipating the heat well onto the aluminium plate. And this is another, uh, I'll just pan out here, this is another of these uh, things that if you run your fingers across the back of this isolated plate, you get a slight fuzzing. It's not live, it's just capacitive coupling from the uh, live, the tracks on this side through that thin layer of fiberglass that separates it from the aluminium substrate at the back plate. So it's quite interesting strips. I don't know what their intended application is. I'm guessing it's just a general replacement strip for where you might have a perhaps a 13 watt 21 inch fluorescent T5 tube, perhaps, or perhaps just designed as a stackable array of LEDs for lighting sign panels. But it's quite smart, and once again, it is fully insulated by this plastic cover that goes over it to actually make it sort of safe for general handling in a sense. But yeah, it's quite neat, I quite like that.